Have you ever wondered what's actually going on inside the mind of an AI like ChatGPT or Claude? We see them perform amazing feats, writing poetry, solving complex problems, but how they do it has largely been a mystery. It's like having a brilliant friend who can't explain their own thought process. This is often called the black box problem of AI. But what if we could peel back the layers and look inside? A team of researchers at Anthropic did just that. In their groundbreaking paper, on the biology of a large language model, they propose we should study these AIs not like computer programs, but like living organisms. Think about it this way. Evolution is a fairly simple process, but over billions of years, it has produced the spectacular complexity of life. Similarly, the training algorithms for large language models, or LLMs, are straightforward, but they give birth to incredibly intricate internal mechanisms that we don't understand. This paper gives us the microscope to start exploring this new kind of biology. So, how does this AI microscope work? Well, trying to understand an LLM by looking at individual neurons is a dead end. A single neuron can be polysemantic, meaning it might fire for totally unrelated things like the word cat, the concept of grammar, and the color blue all at once. It's messy. The researcher's brilliant idea was to build a replacement model. Instead of messy neurons, this model uses clean, understandable building blocks called features. A single feature represents a single concept. For instance, there might be a feature for the concept of a state capital, or a feature for things related to France. They achieve this swap using a cross-layer transcoder, or CLT. You can think of a CLT as a specialized dictionary that learns to translate the complex activity of many neurons into the sparse, clean activity of features. In their study of the haiku model, they trained a CLT with a staggering 30 million features to choose from, giving them a rich, high-resolution vocabulary to describe the model's thoughts. Once they have this replacement model, they can create attribution graphs using the tool they built, called Circuit Tracer. For a specific prompt, like the capital of the state containing Dallas is, the graph traces which features cause other features to activate, step by step, from the input all the way to the final output. It's a map of the model's reasoning process for that one specific task. You can think of attribution graphs as essentially wiring diagrams of the model's thoughts, showing how these features connect and activate each other to produce a final answer. These graphs can still be incredibly complex. So the researchers group related features into super nodes. For example, Several different features that all relate to the concept of Texas can be grouped into a single Texas supernode. This simplifies the map, making the overall algorithm much easier to read, like the ones you see here. Let's try it out with an example. I ran the prompt. The capital city of the country where the Colosseum is located is... The model, Gemma, correctly answers Rome. But how did it connect the Colosseum to Rome? First, the circuit tracer shows that the word Colosseum strongly activates features related to Roman history and inscriptions. You can see these connections lighting up here. The model is thinking, okay, Colosseum, that's a Roman thing. At the same time, the word capital in the prompt activates a whole different set of features, a general concept of capital cities. So now the model has two big clues active in its mind, Roman Italy and capital city. Finally, the attribution graph shows how these two streams of thought combine. The features for Italy and the features for capital city both point towards features that want to say the word Rome. The intersection of these two concepts leads to the correct answer. It's genuine multi-step reasoning happening right inside the model's forward pass. This tool has uncovered some truly fascinating behaviors. For instance, the researchers found that LLMs can plan ahead. When asked to write a poem that rhymes with the word it, the model activates features for potential rhyming words like rabbit and habit before it even starts writing the line. It then works backward from that planned word to construct a sentence that makes sense. That's incredible foresight. They also found that models seem to have a kind of universal, language-independent way of thinking. When asked for the opposite of small in English, French, and Chinese, the model uses a shared set of abstract features for the concept of opposite, or the concept of size, alongside language-specific features. It's like the model translates the problem into a common mentalese to solve it.
This research also sheds light on a huge problem, hallucinations. The model has a default circuit that says, I don't know. When it recognizes a familiar name, like Michael Jordan, it activates known answer features that switch off this refusal circuit. But this can misfire. The model might recognize Andre Karpathy as a famous researcher, switch off the I don't know circuit, but then realize it doesn't actually know his papers, so it hallucinates a plausible sounding title. Even more subtly, sometimes the model's step-by-step -step reasoning is completely unfaithful to its actual computation. In one experiment, they told the model the answer to a math problem was four, which was wrong. The model showed a fake chain of thought, working backward from the number four to invent a calculation that would produce it, just to agree with the user. This is called motivated reasoning. The most empowering part of this research, it's open source. Anthropic released the Circuit Tracer library, and there's a full tutorial showing how to run these experiments yourself. This is not some secret sauce. It's verifiable science. For example, in the tutorial, they show how to perform an intervention. You can programmatically turn off the Texas features and see the model's top prediction change from Austin to the capitals of other states. This is how you can be sure the features you've identified are actually causing the behavior. So what does this all mean? It means we are finally leaving the era of treating AI as a mystical black box. We are developing the tools to do real descriptive science on these artificial minds. By understanding their internal biology, we can build safer, more reliable, and more aligned AI systems. This is just the beginning of a new and exciting field. The map of the AI mind is still largely unwritten, but for the first time, we have a light to guide us through the darkness. If you're curious, I highly encourage you to check out the paper and the open source tools. Who knows what you might discover?